said today we are working on what 14 2 uh that's for liberal arts and math for college readiness and then for algebra 2 we have factoring uh we better be good at factoring just because we have to do a lot of it when it comes to our quadratics okay if you have questions please write them in the chat i will be able to get to your question because now we're starting to step up our game and we really have to make sure that we understand everything that's going on, okay? So add or subtract polynomials, pretty simple to add or subtract polynomials. Uh, whenever we add or subtract polynomials, essentially you're just doing one of the steps and then you're combining like terms. We got a lot of people coming in late, okay? All right, so now, doom, 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 doom. I got 10G squared plus 3G minus 10. It's in parentheses. What are we going to do? We are going to add one polynomial, this is a trinomial, to another trinomial. And that's just for verbiage. But remember, there is exactly what? There's a one here. So what do we do with that? We distribute this one. Anytime you multiply anything by one, what, what happens? Nothing, it's just itself. So this is pretty simple and straightforward. I am going to have what? 10G squared plus 3G minus 10 plus one times 2G. So that's a plus 2G squared. One times G plus G, one times nine plus nine. Simple, correct? So now what do we do? We go through and we combine like terms. So that first one was PEMDAS, actually distribute, it's PEMDAS, same thing. So I'll make it consistent, distribute. We just distribute a positive one to make the parentheses drop. Step two, what are we gonna do? That's right, we gotta combine like terms. So with that being said, I have a G squared here. I have a G squared here. Notice I am circling the signs with it. I have a G to the first power, and I have a G to the first power. I have a negative 10, and I have a positive nine. Why does the negative 10 and the positive nine go together? Because they are constants, okay? So with that being said, since they are constants, I'm able to do what? Just do what it says, 10G plus, 10G squared plus 2G squared. What do you get? You get 10G, not 10G, 10 plus two is 12. So I get 12G squared. Now, what do I do with this 3G plus G? Well, there's a one here. So three plus one is what? Four, so I get 4G. And then I do my constants last. Negative 10 plus nine is really 10 minus nine, which is one, but I keep the sign of the bigger number. So I get minus one. So 12G squared plus 4G minus one is my final answer. Any questions on that? No questions, no questions, no questions. I got you unmuted. So no questions? Nope. No? no? Good. <laughs> So this is, huh? And they turn all the baseboards, and you can see the one in there. It's all, you know, they have to That's just background noise? All right. So here we go. I'm going to pick somebody. Let's go with, da, 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 da. all right. Carlos. I unmute Carlos. There we go. Carlos, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. You're very low, but I can hear you. All right, so let's do a problem together, Carlos. Let's do problem number five. I want you to tell me what to do. So uh, we combine like terms first? Yes. What terms are we going to combine? Uh, AB2 and 3AB2. Good. What else? 13B, 7B. Good. Negative 4A plus A. 
Did I do my circles correct? Uh, yes. Good. All right. So do them. Do the grade first. So it will be four AB2. Four AB2, good. Uh, 20B. We'll be 20B, but alphabetically, what comes first, A or B? Oh, A, A. All right, so let's do it. So it will be uh, mine, uh, negative three A. Good. And the last one will be the... Uh, Twenty B. Twenty B. That's a great job. Great job, Carlos, right there. Let's go to our next contestant. Um, boom, 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 boom. Uh, let's go with Jonathan. Jonathan, are you here? No, Jonathan. Jonathan. Hey. There we go. All right, let's do a problem. Let's do. All right. Ooh. All right, so we've been doing addition. Let's do subtraction now. Jonathan, what would I do for problem number 11? Uh, start with parentheses. Mm hmm. And. Make negative three s to the power of three. So Plus, you're, gonna, you're telling uh, me to distribute this into every term, correct? Yeah. Okay. So what does that get me? Negative three s to the third power minus four s plus ten. Great job. Did anything happen to this first uh, polynomial? No. Now, what do we do? Uh, combine like terms. Go ahead, do it for me. Uh, 3s to the power of 3. Where do you see 3s to the power of 3? Uh, you take 6s to the power of 3 and subtract it by 3s. Negative. Thank you. Yeah. And then you said it was 3s to the power of 3. Good. Yeah, yes. Uh, then you combine the 9s with and subtract it by 4s. And you get? Uh, 5s. Good. What's next? Then you add 10 and 10. And you get? 20. 20. Great job, Jonathan. Great job. Now, for those who are just joining, we're doing 14.2. 14.2 is what we are doing, so you know exactly where we're at, okay? So all, are, all we're doing is adding or subtracting. Now, adding or subtracting is really nothing more than what? Combining like terms. So if I look at addition, I'm either taking this one and distributing the one to the second one, or if I come up here, it's a negative one. And if I multiply by a negative one, all I do is change the signs. So a negative and negative, positive 12R squared. Negative 2PR becomes positive 2PR. And positive 8P becomes negative 8P. Did anything happen to this first poly uh, polynomial? No, it just stays the same. R squared, 8PR minus P. Now remember, to combine like terms, it has to have the same variables and the same power, but I don't change them. So here is a negative one R squared, and here is a 12 R squared. So I'm able to write what? That is correct, 11 R squared. Then I have a eight PR, here's a two PR, so I get a positive 10 PR. And then I have a negative one 
P and a negative eight P. So I get negative nine P. And that's how you do it, it's pretty simple. This one, nothing changes, you just drop the parentheses and start combining like terms for question number nine. Okay, so I'm gonna open this back up. I wanna make sure, that's how simple that is, that's really nothing mind blowing, it's just combining like terms. So anybody have any issues with section 14.2, adding and subtracting polynomials? No. No. Oh. No. no. We're all good on that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all you have to do is know exactly, are we adding, are we subtracting? And they'll pretty much give you the equation, okay? Now, let's deal with the good stuff. Factoring. Yay. So hopefully you've looked at 15.1 because it goes through a lot of what we're doing. But before we even touch a problem, we have to understand that quadratics, quadratics have what? It's a polynomial with the highest degree of what? Two. It's going to form a shape of a U and all that good stuff, but we're not talking about graphing right now. Out of the get, we're only dealing with the equation. We're only dealing with the equation right now. Okay, so this is the format. So now, no matter what I do, you should be able to list what A, B, and C is. Now, in class, we were able to sit there and go through with those cards. What is Y? What is M? What is X? What is B? You're doing the same thing here. So if I put 2X squared plus 3X plus 8, you should be able to say that A is equal to what? Anybody? Anybody? Squared. Anybody? A is equal to what? 2X squared. No. A is equal to what? Just 2. Just the 2. What's B equal to? 3. 3. And what's C equal to? 8. 8. That's how simple that is. If you can do that, then the rest of the techniques are going to get pretty simple, okay? So here I go. I'm going to teach you how to do it from nothing to something. Boom, 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 boom. Let's meet you all. Okay. So here's the thing. If I start with AX squared plus BX plus C, and I ask you to factor this, Remember our four, um, our four checklist items? It was PEMDAS, distribute, remove fractions, and factor. Well, guess what? We're here now. We're learning how to factor. So here we go. If I want to factor, that means that I am going to factor right now this quadratic into two, and this is what we call it, binomials. Binomials have two terms. The first term is always going to be X. The second term could be plus or minus, but it's gonna be plus or minus something. Now, how do I get there, right? So I could say plus eight, I can say plus nine. It could be something like that. So that's what it would look like, okay? And that would mean that you have totally factored this quadratic. So let's give you an example. X squared plus, plus, let's use something odd. So let's say 10. So I'm going to put 7X. Now, A is equal to 1. There's a 1 there. B is equal to 7. C is equal to 10. Now, this is real important to pay attention to. When A is 1, this is the method that you're going to use, okay? The first thing you're going to do is take the absolute value of A and you're going to multiply it to the absolute value of C. I'm gonna let that sink in. Absolute value of A times the absolute value of C. All that does absolute value is turn it into a positive number. So A is equal to what? One. C is equal to what? 10. One times 10 is equal to what? 10. Simple. That is really, really easy, okay? What is the second thing that you're going to do? 
you are going to list all factors. And this is how you're going to do the list. You're going to make this chart here. You're not going to start off with two. Remember, I want a list. I don't want a factor tree. Two different things. I want a list. Always start with one. Always. So one times what gets me to 10? 10. I go to two. Two times what gets me to 10? Five. Notice I'm not writing any multiplication signs. I'm just writing the factors. Three. Does three get me to 10? No. Does four get me to 10? No. Five. Well, I already see a five there on the right-hand side. So I don't want to do duplicates because I could write five times two and 10 times one, but they're the same thing. Okay. Now, now that I'm done with that, here is a graphic organizer. Take a break. Pause, pause, pause. All right. Let me just check with y'all and make sure that you understand those first two steps. All right. Do we understand the Plus first seven. two steps? Oh, I got to turn it on. X minus five. Yes. We understand the first two steps? I understood. Yes. Yes. Right. yes. So here we go. Hey, can you throw this away? All right. So now, here's a graphic organizer to make your life easy. I'm going to show you the graphic orga organizer, and then I'm going to apply it to this problem. All right. You need to know something about the C, and you need to know something about the B. B can be, I mean, C can be positive, or C could be negative. All right. B can also be positive or it could be negative. Now, this graphic organizer is going to help you understand what your final answer should look like. Okay. So here we go. Remember, we're going to multiply two binomials. If C is positive, and B is positive, then both of these binomials will be addition. So X plus some number. And the second one will be X plus some number. So you will get a binomial that will say positive, positive. If C is positive and B is negative, now you will get a negative and a negative. So think about this. A positive times a positive will get you a what? Positive number. A positive plus a positive will still get you a positive number. Now think about this. C, because that's the multiplication side. B is the addition side, right? So a negative times a negative, what will it get me? a positive C. A negative minus a negative will get me a negative B. Okay, so now we go over to when C is negative. When C is negative, now think about it. This is where B is really instrumental. If the B is positive, the bigger number has to be positive. The smaller factor has to be negative. What am I talking about? Well, look here. Aren't these the small numbers? And these are the bigger numbers, correct? Well, the bigger number has to be positive. The smaller number has to be negative. Now let's do our multiplication. A negative times a positive is a what? Negative. If a bigger number is positive and a smaller number is negative, when I add them up or subtract them, I'm really subtracting, I have to keep the sign of the bigger number. That keeps me positive. Now think about the next one. If B is negative, the bigger number has to be what? Negative. The smaller number has to be positive. So let's do our multiplication. Uh, 
positive times a negative is a negative. Awesome. But a positive minus a negative and the negative is bigger, I get a negative number. And you're probably like, what in the world are you talking about, Mr. Harris? That's A-OK. -okay. Look over here. C is what? Positive. It's a positive 10. B is what? Positive. It's a positive B. So I have a positive and a positive. I know my answer will be positive, positive. So that means that both of my factors have to be positive numbers. I want them to add up to be B. What is B equal to? Seven. Now watch this. One times 10 is 10. Good. One plus 10 is what? 11. Two times five is what? 10. Two plus five is what? Seven. Which one is equal to my B? Right there. So I know the factors, two and five, is what I'm going to use for my binomial. So remember, our binomial is what? X. X. X always goes in the first term. What factors do I fill in? Positive two and a positive five. My answer for this problem, right? Remember, we started here. X squared plus seven X plus 10. Factor it. Well, the factors are X plus two, X plus five. And you're probably like, huh? Well, let's prove it. Here's the proof. X plus two, X plus five. Remember, distributing, what do we do? We multiply. But if we factor, what are we doing? We're dividing. All right, so we divided these factors out of there. So here we go. FOIL, first, outer, inner, last. That is equal to what? X times X plus X times two plus two times x plus two times two. x times x is what? x squared. Remember, add the exponents. x times two, two x. Two, x, two times x, two x. Two times two, four. Oh, well, I don't know why. Just because y'all on mute doesn't mean that y'all got to sit there and be quiet. I just saw what my mistake was. What was my mistake? I didn't copy the problem right. <laughs> so X plus two and it's X plus five. Sorry about that. All right, y'all gotta just keep me on there. Yes, thank you for saying it late, Giovanni. So here we go. It's X, X, two, two. So it's really X times X plus, x times five plus two times x plus two times five. So now what do I get? x squared plus five x plus two x plus 10. What can I do? Combine like terms. x squared plus seven x plus 10. Isn't that where we started? So I proved that the factors, x plus two and x plus five, actually are factors of x squared plus seven x plus 10. There we go. Talk to me. Understand, don't understand. Oh, I am myself. I understand. Understand, do understand. Not really. Not really.
You gotta don't mute yourself because once you do it, why you keep on muting me? I, I sound like I got a tornado in my house. Who is that? Who's got a tornado in the house? <laughs> Aiden. 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 It's not funny. Like, you stop. Jim, shut up. Aiden, shut up. No, I'm not yeah, confused. Funny. Everything's fine here, guys. All right, so here we go. I put a thumbs up, but you can't see me. Let's start off <laughs> right here. So this is our quadratic. What is A? A is 1. Is is seven. Is ten. Okay. Ten. When I am factoring this quadratic, the first step is to do what? A times C. It's A times C, but remember, it's always the absolute value. Yeah, A times C. Okay. And that's a, yeah. so that's a plus C. We get that. Ten. One times ten is ten. Now, uh -huh. does everybody understand the how, how to get the list of factors? Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Always start with what number? One. One. Always start with one. So one times what gets me to ten? It'll be ten. Two times what gets me to ten? Five. Uh -huh. Two, three, four, five. Don't use anything that repeats. No. <laughs> He has to give me easy problems. Hey, okay, I'm gonna mute myself, Mr. That's a whole lot of people on the ground. Goodness gracious. <clears throat> there we go. Two times five is ten. So we're good there. The mm -hmm. second part is not only do we have to find the factors that multiply to C. Remember, this is C basically, because A is always one. We also need to find the factors that will add up to B. To B. And B is seven. A positive seven. Two plus five equals So that's where this graphic organizer comes into play. Mm. Okay. The graphic organizer really helps you out. Always start with C. Is C positive or negative? Because that's going to deal with your multiplication. If C is positive, then I have two choices. A positive times a positive or a negative times a negative. And that will get me to a positive C. And then I just look at B. Is B positive? Well, if it's positive, only a positive times a positive will have positive numbers, but I can also add positive numbers and still get my positive B. Yeah. I have a negative times a negative. I still get a positive C, but they will add up to be a negative B. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this graphic organizer has saved the many a many a seat. Okay. It makes real, real uh, good sense when it comes to that. So let's just do another example. Uh, I'm gonna pull Aiden out the crowd. I'm gonna mute everybody else. Where's Aiden? Aiden disappeared that quick. He out of there. Don't pull me out the crowd. Aiden, you got a tornado behind you? Well, I don't think, can you guys hear it? No, I don't hear anything. Oh. Oh, okay. All right. So I'm going to give you something simple. We have X squared. We have 8. And we have... Okay, try eight. that. That's my guess. All it's right. going to be... Mom, shut it. My mom was... <laughs> X plus 2 times X plus 4. <laughs> Did he hear me? Yeah. Did yes. I get it right? Yes, you got it right. And that's how simple... Yes, I'm going to be your top student. <laughs> <laughs> Here, this is the answer for the other one. So, and that's the beautiful thing. Beautiful. You can actually look at these problems and know that the oh, four plus say eight that is eight and two. So four times two is eight, but four plus two is six. That's how simple that is. But I can't teach it that way because not everybody can see those things. So with that being said, all I have to do is list. <laughs> I Correct? So now, Aiden, what do I do? Aiden disappeared. Aiden muted himself that quick. Who else is in Giovanni? All right. Javon. Hello? Now, Giovanni, you're in my first period? Yes. No, so you're not in algebra two. Let me see. 
Jelani, uh, I'm gonna mute you. I'm going to my wow. one, one of my one of my favorite students is on. I gotta I gotta get to her. She knows who it is. Watch it disappear on me. Hey Marie. You just tried me. <laughs> I can't believe you just tried me like that, Mr. Harris. Hey Marie. By the way, my mom says hello. Tell moms I said hi. So here we go. Marie. Wait, but Aiden said to unmute him. Oh Lord, let's see. <laughs> let's I'm a I'm me a and, me and Aiden can one. work this out together. Yes, you can work it out together. All right, ready? There you go. You got yourself. you got your, your your best pal, Aiden. Is you I saw, I saw it coming. He said my favorite student. I he said, said I know I saw Marie on and here. I knew it was me. <laughs> <laughs> so you okay. go. what do we do after I know A, B, and C? Wait, we're factoring, right? We're factoring. Who has a plate back here? Cameron shush. Tell Cameron to shush. Marie said shush. I'm ready for the next question. Marie <laughs> So we're factoring. What do we yes. do after we know A, B, and C? Um, we see what, like, yeah, what can multiply into those numbers no, or like the factors of those numbers. Before that, how do I get to know the factors? It's a very yeah. important step because later on, I can make this more difficult. Therefore, you're going to have to make this step. I know what you're saying. I forget what it's called. You know, when you like put them side by side and then, yeah. What is that called? A factor oh, no. tree? Oh, no. Factor train? Tree. <laughs> I think I'm wrong. Probably. Straight up and down bars mean absolute value. Oh. It is A times C. Absolute value of A times C. Repeat that. Absolute value, absolute of, A value of A times C. Beautiful. So what's A? Uh, a letter. Oh. <laughs> it says A is equal to one, Marie. So one. What's C? Eight. What is one times eight? Eight. Nine. Eight. Boy. This is where you need to start. Okay. So here we go. Now what do I do? B. Not B. A. Oh my goodness. Can't y'all see the notes? Are y'all taking notes? Oh. Mm -hmm. To I be honest doing, with you, I was no. doing the H and M work. Oh Lord! Can List factors. Factor? List of factors. List factors for what number for do eight? you start with? One and eight. One. one and eight. So one and eight. Then I go to what number? Oh Two and gosh. four. Two and four. Then I go to three. Correct. Yes. Does three work? No. So where am I at? Two oh. and four. I'm at four, so I don't have to write it because four is already written down, correct? Yes. Now, those are the multiplication ones. I want to be able to add them to make them equal what? Um, to um, equal B. Six. Six. Equal six. B, which is six. Great job. Yeah. The factors, are they positive? Are they negative? Or are they positive and negative or negative and positive? They're all positive. Why? Why are they all positive? Because, because they're, no, they're all positive. No, because there's no negatives in the polynomial. No, because C is positive and because B is positive. You yeah, that's basically you know that. Because I'm going to switch the numbers up and you'll <clears throat> see. It'll be the same thing and it'll change what we do. So positive, 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 positive. One plus eight is what? Nine. Two plus four? So what are going to be my factors? Nine and six. Why would the two and four? <laughs> I'm so confused. Wait, do we have the next problem? No. I'm trying. Oh, my God. Why would two and four be the factors that I use? Because they equal six. Because they equal six, which is equal to what? B. B. So I know that those are my factors. Yes. Yeah. Sure. I write my binomial. Oh. It always goes in the first term. Um, it's a letter. Mr. Harris, Two. you sound like a oh, robot X, at the X, moment. X. X. What goes in the second term? Plus. Oh. Two. 
And what goes in the second term? Plus four. So did you completely factor it? Yes. Yes. Yay. Yay. Y'all too. Good safe. job, Marie. I'm so proud of you, Aiden. All right. So what about this one? We are going to do eight. I know we're not the only ones in Algebra 2 in here. Maybe. Me and, me and Marie are just the great students that come. All right. So there we go. X squared minus 7x plus 8. What is you didn't ask your mom for the answer. Marie said ask my mom. No. X minus 8 times X <laughs> plus 1. <laughs> Mr. Harris, are you impressed with me? I'm loving it. I have two claps for you. Two claps for you. Because you're doing your thing. See, we want me to teach the class? You want to teach? Go. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Cameron, move your phone. So Marie, what is A, B, and C? Um, uh, uh, can I take an educated guess? Sure. I still don't know. You can ask Aiden. Oh my God. <laughs> Marie, look at the eight, and what are two fa the two no, factors? No, he's asking what A is. Oh, A is X squared. No. <laughs> okay, A it's is one. X squared. No. Marie. B okay, Marie. never mind. And a is group. one. Why do we need to know what A is? What is A anyway? It's an e it's an easier way, step by step, to figure out the the problem. Marie, look at the eight. Think of two factors. When you either add them or subtract them, we'll give you the seven. <laughs> Mr. Harris Are is you teaching the us. <laughs> he said I could teach. I'm trying to help out. He's jumping too far ahead because I it's going to change when A is not one. When A is not one, things change. Correct. Then you have to do a different strategy. I got a strategy for that one too. <laughs> <laughs> so God. A is yes. What is A, Marie? What? Oh my God! You said, you said one. A, a yeah, one. A equals one. B what is B? Negative seven. Yay! Let's see. Eight. What do I do from here? You already took this class. Let us answer, Mom. I didn't take algebra two. I went straight to calculus from geometry. You're so smart. <laughs> Imagine. I just I don't know. Could never it's be me. Really, algebra one. You just gotta memorize the patterns and the formulas. <laughs> Who has time for that? Mom apparently didn't. <laughs> Cameron's not even in this class. A She's times B. That's next. Okay, then what do you do after A times B? What is A? Huh? What is the absolute <laughs> value of A? It's all the way up. One. One. What's the absolute value of? Oh, uh, not B. Sorry, that should be a C. Eight. Eight. What is one? Wait, one times eight equals eight. Awesome. What are the factors of eight? One and eight. And oh my gosh, I did that in step one. Four. Good. Now, C is what? Positive or negative? Positive. What's B? Negative. Therefore, the big number has to be what? Um, a negative. So the smaller number has to be what? Positive. Because a positive times a negative is going to be a, a negative. A negative. And actually, this is actually wrong. This would have to be a negative also. Is it in my answer? All right. So it has to be a negative. If it was positive, then you would definitely be wrong and it wouldn't be answerable. So this has to be a negative. Because a positive times a negative is a negative. So C is negative. Me and Marie are the only two in there. All right. So C is negative. So here we go. What is negative 8 plus 1? Mr. Harris, you're lagging. Yes. Y'all are lagging to me. I don't know who it is. Yeah, you're most yeah. definitely lagging. You sound like a robot. Are you at McDonald's? Go ahead with all of that. I don't go to public places. So here we go. Marie. You're not even allowed to go to McDonald's right now. Can y'all hear me, Aiden? Yes. All right, so here we go. What is one minus eight? Negative seven. Good, what's two minus four? Two. Not two, but what? Oh, negative two, sorry. Okay. So which one works? The first one. So now I can write my binomial, correct? What goes in the first term? 
What goes for the second term? Negative. For the first one or the second one? The first one. Plus uno. And what goes for the second one? Mm, I'm trying to figure out which way your mouse is about to go. Negative eight. <laughs> Yay. So that's how you factor those, okay? I need to see the ones that don't have a one at the beginning, an A. That is section four. That's 5 point, that's 15.3. He's in 15.2, Mom. Why are you doing 15.2? Because I already finished it. <laughs> I'm ahead of the game. You finished what? 15.2. Oh. Anyway. 15.3 is going to be a different way you have to group them. But let's go through this one right now. Let's see if <laughs> have some other good students on here. Aw. Okay, bye. I'm going with, if she'll unmute it, she keeps muting it right back. Estella. There we go. Estella. Mm hmm Did you get all that? Yeah. All right, so here we go. What is A for question number one? Um, X. Not X. It's X. The Weird. Coefficient. It's the coefficient. So, so one. One. B is what? I don't know. What's B? Seven. What's C? Ten. Good. Notice that A, B, and C are all numbers. It's not going to be the variables. So now we're going to do the absolute value of A times the absolute value of C. What is the absolute value of A? Stella? One. Good. What's the absolute value of C? Ten. Good. One times ten is what? Ten. Good. Now we're going to do factors. Always start with what number? Stella? One. One. So one times what gets me to 10? One times 10. Good. Two. Does two go into 10 evenly? Yes. Two times what? Five. Good. Does three go into 10? No. That's four? No. And is five already written? Do we have five already listed? No. Is Why it? Not? Yeah, but. It doesn't have to be. If I'm, I'm not going to write it on the right side if I already see it on, I mean, on the left side, if I already see it on the right side. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So we don't want to duplicate any of our work. So here we go. Is C positive or negative? Positive. Positive. Good. So if C is positive, I only have two choices. I'm either going to have plus plus or negative negative. Okay. So now, how do I know which one to choose? Is B positive or is B negative? Positive. So which one am I going to choose? The top one or the bottom one? The top one. Top one. So that means all of these factors are going to be positive, correct? Mm -hmm. So here we go. I always just put the B there so it reminds me what I'm looking for. One plus 10 is what? 11. What's two plus five? Seven. Which one works? The one and the 10 or the two and the five? The two and the five. Two and the five, so I circle it. Makes my life easy, okay? So now I can do my binomial. What always goes in the first term? What letter? Uh, X. X. So now what do I fill in for the second terms? The two and the five. So I put a plus two and a? Plus five. Am I done? I'm done, correct? 
Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Beautiful. All right. Isaiah. Isaiah. Uh -huh. Here we go. You ready? Uh, sure. Let's do, deal with some negatives. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Let's do 11. What's A? All right, so A is 1. B is? Negative 11. C is? 18. Good. So what do I do from here? Uh, you want to multiply the absolute value, A and C. So you want to do uh, 1 times 18. Mm-hmm. That's going to give you 18. And now I do? We got a factor. So, you know, we start at 1. So we got uh, 1 times 18. Mm-hmm. We're going to do a... What else goes into it? So we got two going to that uh, nine times. Uh, three going to that six times. Uh, stop right there. There you go. Because four and five don't work, right? Nope. So C is positive. That's going to get us a plus, plus, or a negative, negative. B is what? Uh, B is also positive. B is positive? Yep. B's what? Oh, well, look at that wrong answer. It's negative. My bad. There you go. So which one am I going to choose? The positive or the negative? Go to the negative. There you go. So both of these are going to be what? Negative. So negative 1 minus 18 is what? Going to be negative 19. Negative 2 minus 9 is? Negative 11. And negative 3 minus 6 is? Negative 9. Which one works? Uh, let me see. Negative nine works. This one works because I'm looking for what? What you looking for? Don't I want them to add up to B? Oh, okay, okay. And then you say negative 19, negative 11, and negative 9, correct? Got it. Negative 11 works. So what are the two factors I'm going to use? Negative 11 and, I mean, negative 9 and negative factors 2. factors am I going to use? Yeah, uh, the negative 2 and negative 9. Good. So what goes in for the first term? What letter? It's going to be X minus 2. Good. And then X minus 9. Good. Does that make sense? Yes? A whole lot of it. A lot of it, not all of it. Yeah, no. a whole lot. You know what? It's a static yes. Pass. I got you. All right, so here we go. Let's get it when C is negative. We've done a lot of. We've done a lot of C is positive. So let's do one where C is negative. Okay, let's go with. Deandra. Vete para la resinga de tu madre. See, mommy. See, mommy. So here we go. A is equal to what? To be honest, I'm I'm not gonna lie. I have no idea what you've been talking about this entire time. Gotcha. So let's walk through it. A is equal to what? One. Good. B is equal to what? Two. What kind of two? Negative two. Awesome. C is equal to what? Negative 35. You're awesome. So now we're going to do the absolute value of A times absolute value of C. What is A? One. And the absolute value of C is what? 35. You're awesome. C, look at you go. One times 35 is what? 35. I'm going to do the factor list, not tree. So, always start with what number? One. And one times what gets me to 35? 35. Does two go into 35? No. Does three? No. Does four? No. Does five? Yep. Five times what? Seven. Does six? Huh? Does six go into 35? No. And seven's already written down, correct? Yep. There we go. See, you know what you're doing. Here we go. C is positive or negative? Po wait. Positive. Negative. 
negative. So you have two choices. You either have a negative times a positive with the bigger number being positive, or you have a positive times a negative with the bigger number being negative. How do I know which one to choose? Where do I look? B. At B. Is B negative or positive? Negative. So the bigger number should be what? Negative 35. Not negative 35. The bigger number should be what? Negative. Negative. So I'm going to choose this one, correct? Yeah. So if the bigger numbers are negative, I make them negative. The smaller numbers become what? Negative? Oh, positive. Positive. You see how this is? Positive, negative. Bigger numbers are on the right, so I make them negative. That means the smaller numbers on the left get, get to become positive, correct? Yeah. So we're searching for B. B is equal to what? Negative 2. So when I add these together, 1 minus 35 is what? Negative 34. Great job. 5 minus 7 is what? Negative 2. And which one works? The bottom one. So I circle it. So now I'm able to write my binomial. What goes in the first term? What letter? X. So what do I fill in for the second terms? X. And the second terms? Um, mm. X what? Negative seven. Well, what's first? I don't know. Look at the arrows. I'm putting arrows. Oh, up. no, because it's so slow. Like, it's not. I'm like sorry. Not for my computer. So, X what? Positive five. There. Positive five. And then X what? Negative seven. And are you done? Mm, no. Yes. Do you, you have a binomial. You have two binomials multiplied together. They are the factors of x squared minus 2x minus 35. Does that make sense? No. And why does that not make sense to you? Because I'm still confused on this. Okay. So let's think about this. I'm going to break this down into something very simple that you do know, right? So this is what you do know. You just did it for 35, but I'm going to do it for 8 so you can really see it. Factors of 8 are what? 1 and 8, 2 and 4, correct? Yeah. So you understand that 1 times 8 is equal to 8. So those are factors of 8. Does that make sense? Yeah. 2 times 4 is equal to 8. Therefore, they are factors of 8, correct? Yep. So watch this. That was x plus 5, x plus 5, x minus 7. So here's x plus 5, x minus 7. If I multiply these together, I'm going to do FOIL, correct? OK. So I get x times x plus x, my, x times negative 7 plus 5 times x plus uh, five times negative seven. So when I multiply, remember I'm multiplying them together. So this is x squared minus seven x plus five x minus thirty five. Combine the like terms, correct? Yeah. X squared minus two x minus thirty five. Isn't this what we started with? Yeah. So when I multiply two things together and I got this, what I started with, doesn't that make these factors of this? Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing as that one times eight, right? Or two times four. We're looking at two different things that will multiply to get me the answer. And that's what we call factoring. Does that make sense? Yeah. So instead of just having you using numbers, we're using what? Binomials. Okay. All right. Great. All right. So let me open this up.
I'm dumb. You have to understand that. Oh my God. You're so smart. So I'm dumb. Anybody, let's talk about it. Is everybody good on factoring when A is equal to one? Remember, this is A yeah. equal to one. It changes when we, we have to add a step when A is greater than one. What lesson is this one? This is A is equal to one. Yeah, and like 14, 14. Uh, 15, two. 15, two, okay. This is 15, two. It's coming around the bend for y'all, for some of y'all. Algebra two is already there. All right. Any other questions? Oh, my, um, Mr. Harris, my login. All right. Uh, I'm sending you know. Oh my God! Holy moly! The hamster fell out of the wheel. All right. So Henry, I'm going to send you the send you your username and password again uh, via email. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? We cooling. Aiden's out. I see. Why would they leave? Whatever. All right. Cool. Everybody else is good? Yeah. All right. Y'all have a great day. I will be posting a Zoom a little bit later. All right. See y'all. Y'all have a great one. Lit. Bye, sunshine. Jay. So enthused to be here with Mr. Harris. I am reporting to you from my lovely office uh, just to make sure that you're having a happy day. Are you having a happy day? No. Uh, let's see if you can change it up by showing you some good math. Okay, so let's kick this off. Do we have any questions to start off with? Anybody, anybody? No. No, yes. all good, we're all healthy. Nobody got that corona. You don't have to watch. Huh? No, we're good. All right, so let's make this happen. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, who we got? Tori's. Come on in, Tori. Let's make it happen. Who's chatting with me? I know you did. I sent you an email, Henry. And I told you that there's, oh, you forgot your login. Oh, so it's not that it's not working. You forgot your login. Totally two different things. Wait till after this session, then uh, I'll be able to reset it and give you another one. Please save all passwords in your browser so you don't have to worry about remembering because I've reset more passwords in the last week than I've done in my lifetime. So, mute you all. There we go. We're good there. All right, let me share my screen. All right, so that being said,